to try, try. While clinical trials are a vital part of research and discovery to help evaluate the benefits and shortcomings of new treatments as well as prevent and detect illness, joining us today to help us all better understand the process and value of clinical trials is Christina Archer, who is Roche Canada's uh, clinical operations guru. Welcome to What She Said. Thank you very much. Okay, so I did not realize that Canada is actually a world leader in clinical trial research. We are here in Canada. It's actually something we should be very proud of. I believe we're ranked fourth globally for the number of clinical trials that we do in Canada. So given our population size, that's that's quite an amazing achievement. And I think it's largely drawn by the quality of the physicians and medical community that we have here in Canada, the stability of our healthcare system and the diversity of our population. All those things make us a really attractive site for clinical trials. Um, And people that are willing to participate. Absolutely. Clinical trials would not happen without patients who are willing to participate in them. So that's a critical component for sure. So how is a clinical trial different from other forms of research? So a clinical trial is specifically looking at the investigation of a medicine or a drug that's in development. Mm -hmm. Um, It's occurs in several different stages. So depending on where it is in the development cycle, the clinical trial will look a bit different. The number of patients we need to include will look different. The types of criteria that need to be met will look different. Um, But really, it's a very structured way of allowing us to take um, a potential new drug through the appropriate stages of development to ensure that it is safe for humans and that it is effective and does what we need it to do uh, in terms of the patient's disease. Okay, so when you say safe, it's like, okay, so that's good. I mean, you know, I, I, it used to be that you knew, people would take part in sort of clinical trials to help, but also because they were paid and because, you know, th- they, want, they wanted to be safe. But how can you ensure that you're safe when you're doing that? What protections are for the people that are taking the tests? Absolutely, for sure. So before uh, a drug ever is administered to a human, there is significant testing that happens in the preclinical setting. So we already have a very good sense of the safety of a drug, but really it needs to be inhuman for us to continue to make those assessments. So in early development stages, we're looking at the level of the dose and how you know quickly you can escalate it to get the effect that you need uh, for the patient's disease. But any patient who enters a clinical trial uh, goes through a process that's called informed consent. So they meet with the physician and the physician's nurse, and they go through in great detail the specifics of that protocol, what we know about the drug to date so far in its development. They're made aware of the procedures that they'll undergo, again, what what medications that they'll be provided, um, and they are given the what we call informed consent. So they're given the option to fully understand um, what is required in the study. Um, their rights are protected throughout the process through independent research ethics committees, and they are given the option of withdrawing from the study at any time. So it really is a partnered approach with the patient to ensure that they have that they are kept safe throughout. And and what are they paid, non paid? How do these trials work? So when the trials that we do here at Roche are in um, actual patients, so you may hear certain advertisements mm-hmm. on the radio, for instance, uh, for compensated trials, and th- those tend to be very early on when they're really just looking at testing um, a drug in in a healthy individual. So those individuals are compensated for their time. The studies that we do at Roche and through Roche Canada are in actual patients. So these patients are not compensated per se. Mm -hmm. However, we do personally feel that no patient should be out of pocket for participating in a clinical trial. So we'll reimburse them for things like parking at a hospital and those types of things because they'll likely need to come a little bit more frequently than they would normally, Mm -hmm. but they're not paid for their participation, no. Okay, that's good to clarify. Now, are clinical trials becoming more complicated? I think so. I mean, yes, Unfortunately, and and, uh, it's it's a good news story as well, but the science is that much more advanced. I think we are trying to tackle diseases uh, that, you know, in past perhaps maybe we've shied away from. Um, The science is quite complicated. Like what? Give us an example of a disease. Uh, So we're looking at treatments for things like 
autism, Alzheimer's disease, uh, as well as obviously a host of oncology or cancer indications as well. Um, And so, yes, the science is complicated. The protocols sometimes are complicated. And so we are asking at times, you know, quite a bit of the patients in order for them to be able to participate. They may need to have more assessments, more blood draws, again, than they would as a a normal patient, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Um, But the real benefit to the patient is that they're getting a really high quality of care. They generally see the physician much more frequently in the context of a clinical trial than they would um, as a non-trial patient. Um, And again, they're really empowered to be a part of the process and and to be part of of working towards a solution. So how long is there an average that you could say that if you were signing up for a trial that are we talking weeks, months? It really depends. So we do some studies, um, perhaps like in a in an asthma type setting where we may look at uh, patients being treated for a period of six or nine months. Um, we do other studies, for instance, in oncology, where we actually po- end up following patients throughout their life so we can collect overall survival data. So definitely the level of intensity would not be the same, for instance, in an oncology study where we're following them for the duration of their life. Mm-hmm. But there would be um, certain follow-up that would happen so that we could continue to collect information to better inform uh, the development plan for that drug. So how, do you, how does one get into a trial? So really, the best way is to have a conversation with, your, with their physician or healthcare provider. Mm-hmm. Um, they are the ones typically who would, in a lot of cases, need to make a referral uh, to a specialist in order for them to be involved if that physician was not themselves a clinical trial investigator. Um, but that said, even some physicians don't necessarily know about all of the clinical trials that are available and all of the mm-hmm. options. So there are some fantastic resources available online, certainly through Health Canada. There's a database of all clinical trials that are being run in Canada. Uh, clinicaltrials.gov as well has a lot of information uh, and post, we post all of our clinical trials there as well. Um, and certainly through uh, the patient organizations in Canada, they are becoming very savvy and very knowledgeable in the space of clinical trials. And at Roche Canada, we have done quite a bit of work with patient organizations so that we can better understand what patients need and understand the patient experience. Uh, so we engage them as well from an awareness perspective around the trials that we're running, and they're a great resource for patients. I think. now, now so, so we're hearing a lot about clinical trial research turning diseases, like, like some cancers, into chronic manageable conditions as opposed to you know, classes diseases. Mm-hmm. So tell us about that. What successes have we had? Yeah, so especially in the oncology space or with cancer, uh, we have some fascinating and really cutting-edge research that's going on across the industry. We're really, we have a class of drugs, you may have heard of it referred to as immuno-oncology, uh, mm-hmm. where really this class of drugs, what it does is it re-engages the patient's own immune system to fight the cancer. The reality is, um, as, as we probably don't like to think about it this way, But you and I have cancer in our bodies at all times, because really what cancer is, is when our cells start dividing without control and the normal mechanisms that would um, would would stop them, would destroy the cancer are no longer working. And that's really what cancer is. So these this class of drugs has the ability to engage patients own immune systems to fight the cancer in a very targeted way. And it's meaningful for a number of reasons. It allows a really sustained response, but it also doesn't have the same side effects as maybe traditional chemotherapy does, which can be quite difficult for patients to endure. So Mm -hmm. patients actually maintain quite a nice and high quality of life. Um, And again, it becomes more of a chronic condition as opposed to a a very acute situation. So then tell us specifically then what Roche Canada does and what resources people can get from you. So at Roche Canada, uh, we are um, a sponsor of many clinical trials in Canada. Uh, We do have resources on our website to to speak to some of that. And we are conducting clinical trials right now across Canada um, in numerous different uh, cancer indications as well as Alzheimer's disease, ophthalmology, uh, and other dermatology indications. So there is a lot of opportunities out there. Again, I would say patients should definitely have a conversation with their healthcare provider to ensure that a clinical mm-hmm. trial is the right option for them. Um, but they should certainly look to educate themselves as well around what clinical trials are and, and to make that determination if it's the right next step for them. And they can find that on the Roche Canada website? Uh, we have some information more specific to clinical trials, but probably if they wanted to just know about what a clinical trial would entail, mm-hmm. uh, there's some great patient resources on the Health Canada website that are not specific to any one company, but really would speak about the process more in depth about informed consent and kind of what 
what it would look like and if it's a potential right fit for them. That's awesome. Christina Archer, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. This is what she said. Stay with us. 